All right, yes, Tom Brady and Tampa Bay Buc Buccaneers defeat the Green Bay Packers. Now you heard me right. They defeat them, was it, 31-26. to Let's talk about the game. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Appreciate the love and support. And basically what, for the most part, happened uh, was a tale of two halves, okay? Uh, it's Aaron Rodgers turned it over. The Bucks played well today. Um, played really well today. I mean, Green Bay played well in the second half, but for the Bucks, it was – they kept running the ball. And what really got them in trouble, I'll talk about that in the second half, was trying to take shots down the field. But looking at the game, they came out scored. All right. Right out the gate, they had a game plan. Mike Evans caught a touchdown. They kind of switched some, flip some, go, they get the ball, we get the ball, and then Green Bay scored. Okay. The issue here is simply Green Bay ain't played nobody this year. I think they beat two. One or two 500 teams, above 500 teams, winning teams. And the teams they beat, that was, I mean, and the teams they was losing to was Tampa. They, they had a very soft schedule. That's just the fact of the matter that it is. And it seemed like they shored up. They they run stop defense, and that showed up today. They stopped the run. Um, they made the adjustment. Mike Payton made the adjustment. He put Gia Lear Alexander wherever Mike Evans went. That was a great adjustment for, for the most part. Um <sighs> It's just that Aaron Rodgers, I mean, even in the NFC Championship that he won, people forget, he was, they was about to lose to Caleb Haney, Caleb Haney. And people don't even remember who Caleb Haney is. He was the back of quarterback. And Jay Culler got on that treadmill and started on the trip. And the Bears really gave him that game. Rodgers just, the Bears just, they didn't do much. You know, they, the Packers didn't do much to win that game. And I remember watching that game. And it wasn't like Green Bay stole that game. They ran through Atlanta. First round, they ran through Atlanta. I mean, ran through the Eagles. Won money on both of them. And with the Bears, it was like they was playing not to lose, and the Bears were playing not to lose. And Aaron Rodgers just made a play, and the Bears had a really good defense that year, I must say. And really, if Jay Cutler had any ball, I mean, sheesh. If they would have Matthew Stafford, they they win that game. So I'm not – people forget Aaron Rodgers is, a, is the paid man of the today. Amazing talent, but a habitual choker. He's going to choke in these games. Remember that year they played Seattle Seahawks? And um, the Seahawks somehow had a miraculous comeback to go to the Super Bowl to play New England, which, you know, we already know what happened in that game. Uh, one of the dumbest play calls not to give it to Marshawn Lynch. And they lost that game. So I remember them losing to, I mean, them losing to Seattle. They lost to the 49ers that, that the year. And, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he don't have the greatest weapons. We will say that. Devontae Adams is amazing. But if they would have got... Oh, that that boy Ayuka or Mooney in the draft this year, it would have been a problem. They would have been a problem, but to be honest, he's a generational talent. We can't tell, and he done most with less, the less. You know, Green Bay defense they did the job. They got three picks today. You know, did they turn it over? Yes. You had a fumble where Aaron Jones. I think on Aaron Jones it was. Tampa Bay got that, scored a touchdown. You had Aaron Rodgers throwing the pick. So really, the turnover margin was one, but Green Bay could afford. I mean. Buccaneers can afford it, especially when Kevin King lost where the receiver was at, and Scotty uh, Scotty Miller scored a touchdown at the end. That that was easy, you know. And as a cornerback, I, I think he might have been playing man. He lost the he lost the receiver, and really he underestimated that white boy's speed. And that white boy can run. This is why you got scouting reports, and he outran him. You know, if that was Antonio Brown, maybe <laughs> maybe he stick to him, but him he underestimated him. And, that was a huge play because if that play don't happen, then what's this game? Green Bay win, but, I mean, that was just the one mistake they defense made. You know, and then you go into the second half, and Green Bay got all this time, and they didn't capitalize on it. I think they kicked the field goal. They did score. They scored 13 points in the um, – they scored 13 points in the in the third quarter. So, I think about it, it was a touchdown and three field goals. Instead of the field goal, shit, turn them a touchdown – we talking about Aaron Rodgers going to the Super Bowl, but they do this every year. Every year I watch the Packers, they, they get the refs approval throughout the regular season. And people say, well, they, they were cheating today for the for the, the pan, but no, they wasn't. I see more holes for, for, from Green Bay than anything. Real talk. I seen a bunch of holes. And they had the second half. They had the momentum. They can't they lost. They got, you know, my man's fumbled, tell best score, but after that, they just ran with it. And what happened was, that's what happened when you don't score. Touchdowns when you score field goals in the game look like this. And I mean you have some controversial calls. Um, but that's a part of football. That's the human element. And 
just looking. You know, in the second half, it came out to the fourth quarter. And the Bucks defense was the real MVP today, and they've been the MVP through this run. The Bucks defense was amazing. When you got Pierre Paul, William Ghost, shout out to him from Cass Tech in Detroit. When you got Devin Smith, Levante David, and Dominic and Sue, we played in Detroit. We missed Sue. Um, you got Vita Veb today. He played well coming off a broken ankle. Shaq Barrett, and Shaq Barrett was the guy. You know, Shaq Barrett, he ended up having a um you know, he had to, he was sack leader last year. He got franchise set, but today Shaq Bear was the guy. Jason Pierre Paul came to play. The linebacker said, and the DBs played well too. Remember, this is nothing smack to Aaron Rodgers. Both of their starting safety got out the got out the game. Aaron Rodgers couldn't take advantage of it. Both of their starting safeties was out this game. Uh uh Antoine Whitfield uh, Jr., he he didn't play, and another guy fell out. And, you know, talking about the plays down the stretch. Really, people talking about that last play on the John, Tyler Johnson, the receiver. Motherfucker held him. You can see that clear as day. And when Bundley was holding guys on every pick he got this Super, this Super Bowl run, he was doing it discreetly. He knew how to do it away, away from the reps. And all the best, you know, corners tell you, Dion and all of them, they, with you not being able to, to chuck or press them past five yards, you know, you got to know some of the tricks. And the great ones did. Rod Wilson, Deion Sanders, Charles Woodson, the real Revis, you know, Deion Sanders, Daryl Green. Um, Jesus, I mean, it's a lot of great corners. Champ Bailey, they knew how to hit hold and be discreet with it. And old boy just held. If he would have kept if he would have kept up speed with Johnson, he would have just took, he would have got away with it. And then the big one, in my opinion, the big one is Matt LaFleur giving the ball to Tom Brady and kicking the field goal. I was for sure they was going to it. But before that, the decision to kick the field goal, Aaron Rodgers could have ran it in. <laughs> he could have ran it in for a touchdown. Ain't nobody even really peeped that out until later and then Trey Aikman said he could have ran it in. Yeah, he could have ran it in for a touchdown. Easily. You know, he stepped up in the pocket. He had a clear way to the touch. And then even if he would have ran and became short, I don't think Matt LaFleur would have kicked the field goal off the you know, inch off the inch off the yard, off the uh inch off the, the goal line. They probably would have went for a QB sneak, and that's like a what a 90% chance of doing, you know, getting it in. And with Aaron Rodgers not running the ball and throwing into double coverage, that was his stupid ass fault. Had he ran and just came up short, they would have went for it. Maybe they would have went for two, maybe they wouldn't have went for two. Who knows? So Aaron Rodgers been choking. Nobody ever met when they expected to win a game. When they get to the NFC Championship game, they just fall short. And they need to give him another one receiver. They need to go find Julio. They need to go get even AJ Green to be better than what they got, you know. And really, it was a it was Tampa Bay's ability to recover because they kept turning it over. And the defense was you know they kept getting stops. They kept getting stops. They kept stopping them. Uh, it's the big show. They just kept being. They was the big show today. They kept stopping them. But Tampa, but Tom Brady ability to. You know, when he, you know, everybody got mad when he threw the ball in the dirt. That was smart. Um, they got Ryan Sucker. He was worth every penny they paid him. He made the kick, and really, that was the game there because Tom turned it over, you know, in the red zone. If they kicked the field goal, we wanted, we, we would have been, you know, drinking beers and, and, and eating food and getting ready for the FC Championship game. Had they kicked that, had they kicked that ball, you know, had he not turned it over in the last pick and, and they would have kicked the football, shit, the game would have been over. You know, and Green Bay fans, oh, they cheated. They cheat for them niggas every year. And nobody bats an eye, but cheating ain't going to get you a Super Bowl every year because when you play against the elite teams and the elite defenses they ran in, Seattle, 49ers, even with the Bears they won, when you play against those guys, shit, Aaron Rodgers can't do shit. You know, and they deserve to lose because every year they cheat for them Green Bay Packers. They do. Every year Aaron Rodgers ain't cut the game. People say, he top 10. Fuck, he top 10. He had one lucky Super Bowl run. If it wasn't for my lines, they wouldn't have made the Super Bowl run because we not Aaron Rodgers out the out the game that year. And they continue to cheat for him. And it's just, it's disgusting. And people say, we team for Tom Brady. How the fuck you cheat for somebody got five or six rings? How do you cheat for him in the NFC, in the NFC, in the AFC? I ain't trying to hear that shit. Aaron Rodgers is an amazing talent, but shit, to be honest, he was lucky to get that Super Bowl that he got. Because they damn sure should have lost the Chicago Bears in the NFC Championship game. But, man, love a lot of them guys out there on Tampa Bay. Tom Brady fan, y'all see it, Michigan. Um, huge Shaq Bear fan, huge and Dominic Sue fan, William Solson from the D. Um, so love Antoine Winfield when he's playing, love his son, um, love Levante David, Devin Smith, love him coming out the drive. Wish he would have dropped the lines, he didn't, but good for him. Um, love Rob Gronkowski, Mike Evans. We could talk about him for a minute. Excuse me, my neck hurting today. It's a little stiff. It's cold in D, cold in Detroit. Mike Evans uh, cost time. He drops some balls. He cost time two picks. People think, but the corner route was a bad throw. By um by time, but that throw um 
where Jair Alexander picked it off in the red zone, in the end zone, that was a bad throw by Tom. He was a little high. Tom should have been a little bit on the numbers, a little bit down towards the face mask, but it is what it is. Um, they probably get uh, Antonio Brown back in. You know, I think with Mike Evans, we're going forward, whatever they do, win the Super Bowl, come back next year. Um, they got to get Mike Evans kind of going underneath from them dig routes and them drag routes and them, them crossing routes. He reminded me of Randy. Randy didn't want to crawl across the middle. And people going to understand that Mike Evans wanted to stretch the field. And they got to start doing something different. Just the corners, the the post, the skinny post, corner post, post corner, whatever. And they probably want to come back. They got to get Mike Evans running underneath. And he's going to become a much dangerous threat if he continues to run underneath. If he run those drags, slants, you know, all those routes, dig routes, in route, whatever you want to call it, the out, the comeback, he'll be able to get down the field a lot more. And that's why my Sean Lattimore or Latimer in New Orleans have a lot of success versus him because he run the same fucking routes. He remind me of Randy so much without the speed. Randy just ran those routes. And if you could take Randy away, Randy didn't have nothing else but going down the field and he had a little screen game. But um, going forward, whoever's going to be the quarterback, if time or not going forward, they got to give Mike Evans – you know, running underneath a little bit. And I know that's Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown job, and Scotty Miller and Mike Evans to stretch the field. But if Mike Evans is going to take that next jump in elevation this game, it's going to have to try running a little bit underneath for us. But, hey, um, let me know what you guys think. So happy Green Gate loss. Uh, don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, call, response, or video request. All my social media links in the description. Fastest way to reach me is Twitter, then Facebook, then Instagram. Also got a Facebook group, all links in the description. Want to make a financial donation, cash app, CJ Good 313 that's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Best way to donate, share the video. And uh, other than that, man, we're moving on to the Chiefs and the Bills. We gone. All right, make sure you check out my homie's channel, The Red Pill Diaries. He is the owner of the Hellblaze. So I'm pretty sure you've seen the ads on my channel. He has a new channel that he wants the information to get out to you guys. So check out his channel. It's called The Red Pill Diaries, all one word. T-H-E-R-E-D-P-I-L-L-D-I. A R I E S for those who are listening, one word on YouTube. He wants you to check it out, so go ahead and check them out over there. Shout out to the brother Rashid for giving me a first opportunity to be able to advertise on my channel. So, shout out to him. Let me know what you guys think. Appreciate the love and support. Check out the channel. We got.